So, this is gonna be lit. So a, a problem here this far north is uh, that in winter time the sun is only out for a couple of hours a day. Which means that when I go to check my mailbox it's really dark. In order to fix that I've decided that I'm going to make a small light that will turn on that I can put in my mailbox. Just as a precaution so it doesn't drain all the batteries I'm also going to add a timer to it so if, if the lid doesn't close entirely it'll still turn off after about a minute and a half. So what I have designed for this is uh, first off I've made this case which um, can fit batteries and uh, the circuitry which I'm gonna put on uh, this little board. Then for the lamp and for the light I'm gonna use uh, one of these power LEDs. This is uh, rated at uh, 1 watt. Normally you would see these with a heatsink on the back, but uh, I've done a bit of testing and uh, as long as I only pass around 60 milliamps, it doesn't get warm at all. This thing is rated all the way up to 200 milliamps and that's the point when you need uh, really need the heatsink. And uh, considering it's nearly al always below freezing outside, uh, here at, at winter time, uh, I don't think it's gonna be that much of an issue because in summertime the sun is only gonna be only gonna be down a couple of hours. So I'll just take it out in summertime. So I'm gonna start with a 100 is it microfarad capacitor. It also needs to go up a little bit so I can uh, so, so I can bend it. So there is a formula for how long the timer is going to be running and keep the light on. And uh, it's um, based on the resistance of your resistor and the capacitance of your capacitance. In my case I'm using a 1 mega ohm resistor along with a 100 microfarad capacitor. And that'll give around uh, 100 seconds. Which should be fine. So I'm going to connect the positive side of the of the capacitor. And it's going to go up here where I'm going to put the voltage. And we're also going to need to uh, put a wire here later, coming out from the timer. Okay, I think the next part will be to solder on the 555 timer. A little bit difficult to solder because it's uh, lead free. I'm going to do the other side also. Okay, so these are all the components that I actually need to, to put on on here. Now I just need to wire everything together. So I have a schematic here that I'm looking at. 4 and 8 should uh, both be connected to the voltage which is um, four and eight. We need to get a fan or something for here. Because I can't imagine having uh, soldering smokes will be very good for your health. There is uh, one more of these that need to be wired across. It was the uh, so you kind of one, two, three, four, five, six. Number six should be connected to number two, which is up here. Which is that one? Okay. 
Okay, it's a little bit too long, so I'm gonna cut it off. Now the reason why I pulled it around that way is because we need to bend the capacitor over to uh, to fit it in the case. There's a big waste of space otherwise. Okay, so pin one is ground, which is this one, and. Uh, I think I might pull that around like that. Yeah, it's a little too long. Pin 1 connected, pin 2 is connected over to the capacitor and resistor. Pin 3 is the output to the LED, so I'm going to put that in later. Because I, I'll be soldering it directly to the uh, output that I'm going to be putting on the case. Number 4 is connected to uh, the positive voltage. So that's probably what I should be doing next to drag it from there up to here. So I actually have a stripping tool for uh, stripping these wires. But uh, these ones are really thin and they're there's only one thread in these which are good when you're connecting them uh, directly from, from one point to another point on the same board. Not as good if you're going to connect it to uh, somewhere outside of the board or when it's going to move because then it's going to break. But it is really easy to strip these with a scissor, so that's why I'm using that. It's probably faster than using my actual stripping tool. Up around. And hooked up here around the corner. I can arrange these wires later. Once everything is on, and then I'm also gonna remove the uh, the pins from the resistor and the capacitor. Well, let's just get everything on the board first. There we go. And uh, the ones on the other side of the 555 timer are only connected to the ones on this side, and we already did, did that. So the next part will be to connect the uh, ground of the the capacitor. So I'm just gonna snip that one off. I think I'll just go across. Probably just connect it like this. There we go, I think that should be uh, it. So I'm going to cut the wires. Or, well, cut the legs, I guess. So 
So it looks like it fits, but uh, the capacitor is poking out, so we'll have to bend that down. There we go. And yeah, that should fit. So, the uh, next step will be to uh, to uh, plug in the battery, and uh, then I need to plug in the LED. But to do that, we need to prepare the case. For that, I got these generic uh, battery contacts. And the double one goes down here. I did add a little snap to it, but I'm not sure how well it works. I think something like that will work. And then we're going to need to connect the single ones. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to bend the tops of them. So let's make sure I get these on the right side. The spiral one goes there. If at first you don't succeed, use more force. There we go. There we go, got the batteries in. Now, on the first prototype of uh, this, I didn't have this um, this little uh, barrier separator here in the middle, which caused the uh, batteries <laughs> to make contact and short circuit. And uh, the first one, that, that prototype was printed in uh, PLA, this one is uh, printed in PETG, and it, it caused this entire section here in the middle to melt. So, got to be a little bit careful when uh, <laughs> designing these things. But uh, now that there is a separator, it shouldn't short circuit. So let's put my uh, tiny multimeter here and uh, see. About uh, 5.20 volts, that means they're fully charged. And um, these are rechargeable batteries. This entire thing with all the values and uh, with the resistor and such was uh, designed with uh, rechargeable batteries in mind because rechargeable batteries these uh, AAA ones are uh, 1.2 volts instead of the standard 1.5 volt of uh, non-rechargeable batteries so if you're gonna make this with normal batteries you'll, you'll wanna probably put on a little bit bigger resistor on the LED but yeah this works which means that it's uh, I think the next step will be to put in uh, these uh, little JST connectors which will uh, be connecting the uh, the magnetic switch and uh, one for the LED. So for this I'm going to be using some super glue and this thing is an absolute nightmare to work with because if you get it on your fingers and trust me if this is the first time you're using it you will get it on your fingers it's uh, going to stick pretty much immediately so make sure you have a lot of uh, paper cleanup stuff available and I've uh, put a uh, paper towel here on a uh, newspaper I'm gonna pull off the tape that I used it no there wasn't normally when I got this there was a nozzle on it but after the first use that thing glues shut so uh, it just falls off so I found that just using some uh, isolating tape will actually hold it quite well so I'm gonna see if I can yeah a few drops of this on here okay I think that works but I need to clean up a little bit this is what I was talking about Be really careful not to get this on your fingers because that's going to stick for days. But you don't have to be uh, too too worried about letting it sit on the plastic for a little while because it takes much longer for it to dry on the plastic. So I'll have plenty of time to uh, stick these connectors on.
There we go. Now we're just going to push them down. a little bit on the front. Something along these lines. And uh, now I'm just gonna let this set for uh, sit overnight because it's really late and I'm gonna continue tomorrow. So a day has passed and I went to the hardware store to pick up some magnet contacts. These are pretty huge compared to the ones that I've been using previously, but they're the only ones I could get on a short notice. Because these things are reversible. So you could have it either normally open or you can have uh, normally closed. Now I just gotta figure out how to uh, how to set that up. Okay, so that wasn't too hard. Plus the, the distance that this thing detects is pretty huge. Though it is a kind of a hefty chunker. So one thing that really annoys me with these things is that they tend to get the uh, normally open, normally closed backwards. Or rather, different vendors will have different states for normal. Uh, but, but this is uh, a reed switch and this is essentially what sits inside of this thing. And uh, when you get a magnet close to it, it uh, closes the switch and closes the circuit. And uh, normal state is when there is no magnet nearby, like this. And uh, this one is normally open, which means that uh, right now if I was to connect the light to these two, it would not turn on. But w when I put the uh, magnet near, it would turn on. But uh, in uh, a normally closed one, there would be a magnet uh, sitting on this thing, which is holding it closed by default. And w whenever you get the uh, the magnet near it, it would open. So that would be a normally closed one. But for some reason, when they put them in a case and sell, sell these two parts together, they've decided to reverse this. And uh, only some vendors will do this. Which means that you essentially have to look at uh, what, she, what each vendor considers normal in every case. Because otherwise you're, you're going to get the opposite one. Now in this one it doesn't really matter because this one has um, uh, both states. So you, you just hook it up to, to a screw based on what state that you want. But uh, even so this one uh, I think also has it wrong. Uh, right now, according to this, it's set to normally open. Which means that, technically, the LED should not be on. Because, normally, th there's no magnet near it. But then if you put it on uh, this, which, th according to this one, is normally closed, now the LED should be on. The, because, while well, there's no magnet near it, it's normal, and then it should be a closed circuit. But it reacts the opposite way. So whenever you go out and, and buy these things you, you essentially have to uh, see what the vendor says. But one way where you can uh, check what sort of it, it is is essentially look at the price because the uh, the ones that are uh, actually normally closed which is uh, this state where it's uh, closed when there's no uh, magnet near and uh, opens when the magnet comes near usually costs a little bit more because they have to put a magnet inside of it but that's just me going on a little bit of a rant let's uh... let's start wiring up this thing now I have my handy little circuit uh, inserted in here and I'm going to snip the uh, power connectors. I'm going to have to 
going to have to start wearing shoes in here at this rate, considering how many of these pins go flying everywhere. So there we have ground, and here we have the voltage, which is 4.8 volt-ish. doesn't really matter that much with this circuit. So something I did here was uh, I designed on, uh, I'm not sure how visible these are, but I put the little uh, symbol for the light here and the little symbol for the magnet here which me means we connect the light to this one and we connect the uh, magnet to this one and in the case of the magnet it's just going to, uh, it doesn't matter which pin I wire anything up to because it just closes the circuit. I think I'm going to put that on the voltage so I need to uh, pull a wire from here and uh, up to here. For this I'm gonna use a slightly more bendy wire so in case I have to take it out again. And for this one we have the light which means that uh, it does need the correct polarity. And to make sure I, I get everything correct I'm just gonna plug in a wire to test it with. So I know that this one is positive and this one is negative. So next I'm going to connect the board to here. Which is going to go out to the uh, magnetic switch. I should be able to just push it down. And it should connect. And the next one needs to be connected to uh, to, to the battery. There we go. Now we have power connected to the board. So next, gonna connect the board to ground. Okay, so we should now have power. Next up we'll need to connect the LED. And the positive end should go on pin 3 of the timer. Didn't think that would work, but it looks like it did. Next I'm going to be connecting the ground wire directly to the battery ground. Doesn't really matter with the, for this project but uh, it's just easier <laughs> to just go directly across. There we go, we should be able to uh, turn this thing on now and uh, see if we get any voltage. So, just for the sake of testing, I'm going to be using a big battery pack. It's the same amount of batteries, it's just C-type batteries. And the main reason for doing that is uh, I just want to use the clamps to make it easier in case there's a short circuit or something and I need to uh, pull the plug. Okay, so hopefully there's no magic smoke coming out of here. And hopefully the big capacitor doesn't blow up. If it decided to blow up right now I would be very surprised considering uh, the power connector here isn't even connected. But the good thing is we can use that. I think we can use that to test, test the voltage. Negative 5 volts, which is correct because I um, plug it in from here. Well, nothing smoking yet. In my lab, we call that progress. So, to test this, I'm going to make sure these two are separated. This now rep represents my power switch. 
so in order to, to turn it on I just need to make sure these two are shorted there we go and now I can test the voltage between these because these are the uh, LED output why don't I just use my previous test setup there we go turns on question is does it turn off and then we wait yep there it goes so everything seems to be in order time to uh, actually wire up the uh, connectors now normally I would uh, try to find some sort of good solderable solution for this but this is literally the only magnet switch that I have left so I'm just gonna have to go with one that you screw in I've ordered some Chinese ones though so those two are the ones that I wanna hook it up to it doesn't ma matter anything about polarity with this one they kept breaking up so I had to add a bit of solder on them to make them stick together eh, good enough so let's get a little bit of heat shrink on there ok so it's not the prettiest connector connection in the world but it's gonna work so the next part will be the LED and I have a 3D printed this tiny case which can be taped anywhere in the on the mailbox and you'll want to figure out which side is uh, positive and which side is negative but in either case it goes down quite tight into the uh, into the hat here like that and then I'm gonna test with a modest resistor to see if I got it the right way around I think I think this is the wrong way yeah that's the right way so the resistor that I've calculated uh, on using for these rechargeable batteries is 10 ohms if you're gonna build this and uh, not use rechargeable batteries then you'll want a bigger one or a heatsink uh, I made it so the uh, resistor snaps in and then it can be soldered on so now I need to see if I can solder that on So this uh, wire that I'm using has uh, a copper side and a non-coppered side. So I'm going to put the uh, coppered side on the voltage and the uh, non-coppered one on ground. But before I solder anything, I need to pull it through the through here. There we go. I think I managed to solder it into the plastic. That's all, always lovely. So now I should simply be able to push it over, snap it in. So let's solder a JST connector to this. Okay, so that went much better than the last one.
Right, I think that's good enough. Now let's plug everything in. There we go, we have power. So the next thing will be to plug in the light and as I have uh, added some symbols here, the light is the uh, inner, the one closer to the center. And then we need to connect this thing. The magnet switch. So now if everything's working correct, it should turn on when I pull this one away. Yep, there we go. Seems to be working. Now we, we just gotta wait a minute. I'm gonna go make some tea. There we go. That seems to work. So, if I now uh, push this back here, and then the uh, capacitor will discharge, and it should then I should then be able to reset it. There we go. And this thing didn't get uh, especially hot. It's a little bit warm, but it's not gonna overheat in a minute unless it's really hot out. But if it's hot out in uh, in Sweden, it's going to be light out. So, the next part will be to add some screws. I went out and got me some 3mm screws today. I don't know if these are going to work, but we'll see. Well then, seems good enough. So, the next step will be to actually rig this thing up in my mailbox. So the problem when I tried this last time was that whenever I was trying to clean the mailbox before adding the tape it would just freeze immediately and create a layer of ice. So uh, I guess Nordic problems require some Nordic solutions. So this time I'm going to try with some uh, windshield wiper fluid. three parts of water and hopefully this time I should be able to, to clean the inside of the mailbox before There we go. And uh, now if I close it, reopen it, it uh, restarts again. So that's that project.